Bastards, today I'm, I'm in a funny mood. I want to talk about zombies. Uh, why? Uh, you cannot always be serious, so this is just for shits and giggles and kind of a fun thinking exercise. So, so it's like when you lo watch it, a survival movie or in this case a zombie movie, you can watch it in, in, in the moment and then you can think to yourself, what would I do in this situation? Well, just a fun, like I said, fun thinking exercise, just for shits and giggles. Uh, yeah, zombies. What do we know about zombies? Well, in mostly they are depicted as a, a moving, living undead, who you only can be killed with a shot in the brain, and they they keep going forever, uh, no matter how many body parts you cut off or how many bullets you shoot into their body, except the brain, apparently. So, uh, yeah. We are going to talk about another type of zombies. What type? Uh, I would say one of the most realistic type of zombies. Uh, three examples come to mind and those are the uh, the most likely way that zombies could manifest in a real somehow uh, way is first rabies. Rabies is a, is a disease being transmitted by bites through uh, animals like rodents dogs and other uh, mammals that are infected uh what the thing about rabies is uh yeah it's uh it's get transmitted by bites uh, the people who are inf infected uh before they get the vaccines because there's a period when you get bitten you can still get a vaccine but once you're really infected it's 100 percent deadly only six people like six people have survived rabies uh, uh ever so very deadly disease but in the later stages of the disease, uh, people uh, are people tend to get aggressive. Uh, they will create foam through the mouth, all the more saliva and foam through the mouth, and they will get delusional. So, in a way, if it somehow a little bit mutates in another way, then it does now. It can it can be a possible zombie virus. Uh, next thing is a uh, cordy of of you. Ophiocordyceps. Uh, it's a type of fungus that infects ants. Uh, what does it do? Uh, when the spores of this fungus uh, lies on the ground, get touched by an ant, the ant will get uh, infected and it's, the fungus will alter the behavior and the brain of the ant. The ant will, go, will climb to the highest point he can find, like a tree, bite itself, uh, bite itself into a twig and remains there still till it's dead. So then the cordy ophiocordyceps will start to grow out of the head and will start to sprout more spores. It gets on the ground, other hands get infected and then the circle of life from this uh, fungus. So in a way that's kind of a soul. There is a, there is a actually a video game based on this where the zombies are infected in this by ophiocordyceps. The Last of Us I think it's called. So yeah, kind of interesting way so possible possible uh you know in a funny way um next uh, I, was, I don't know what this is called but it's some sort of parasite that uh that uh, infects slugs uh, uh the slug eats feces from birds where the where this parasite uh, lies in uh and the parasite will go to the brain of the slug and it will make the slug go high up and or in open places it will go through the eyes and it is kind of sick and fascinating at the same time. It will go into the eyes of the slug, make weird colors and will make the slug go like waving his antennas around to be more visible to birds. In fact, this, this parasite makes the bird go, makes the slug go, hey birds, come here and eat me. And yeah, the uh, slug gets, uh, gets seen, gets eaten by a bird will be digested and the next generation of uh, parasites will be eaten by the next slug by the feces. Uh, again, this is a circle of life for this thing. Yeah, circle of life. Uh, they don't tell you that in the, the this, in the Lion King. Isn't nature beautiful, they say? <laughs> so, yeah. Those are three real life examples that could happen. But today, we are going to take uh, the 28 days later zombies as, a, as the best example. Why? Because I say so. Uh, yeah, uh, what's the thing about these 20 days later zombies? Like I said, it's kind of rabies, some rage virus. 
they get uh, these zombies are just regular people. They get, are just infected and will start to attack everything and every living thing they see, and will try to infect it. Uh, once they are infected, they will move on to the next. Uh, yeah, they're really fast. That's another thing. Instead of the slow shoveling zombies, these these bastards are really fast. So, but they're just humans, so they can can get tired. They can get malnourished, and they will can die of dehydration. So, these are not uh, eternal zombies to say. They will live as long as normal people, and that's the thing. In the movie, they de eventually die off because they cannot find new hosts to hosts to infect. And they do do not eat or drink. They're just adrenaline fueled rage zombies. And the biggest strength of those zombies are they uh, infect really easily uh, and fast. Uh, yeah, when there is a when there is a scene where a guy uh, is angry, knocks on a metal ladder, and but above the ladder there is some dead body, and a crow is eating from it. The crow gets scared while eating from the body. Drops a piece of blood, a drop of blood into the guy's right in his eye, and the guy turns into a zombie within 30 seconds. So that's actually really fast. In real life, I would say this uh, virus could uh, get into through all the cells and reach the brain in perhaps three to five hours. But in this case, it's like uh, in this movie, it's like uh, just under 30 seconds, and you're you're fucked <laughs> to say. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, that's the biggest strength of this uh, virus. So, 28 days later on this virus, how will it manifest? Well, first of all, when it's on the news, they will start to uh, first assume there are, uh, because it's happened so fast, that it are riots or something. Or from uh, uh, some uh, uprising from an organized group or something, I don't know. But it will be weird in the first things. First things. So, when you heard, it, heard this on the news, that people are suddenly rioting in your neighborhood uh, or start, start biting each other. Well, that's the uh, first uh, first uh, red card, I would say. Go, whatever you do for as work, just leave it and go home. Just go home as, as fast as because the, block, the roads will be blocked. So it will be get difficult to get home when other people start to realize it and start to get home to find their family or friends or something. Uh, yeah, so how would you prepare uh, for this? Well, I would say just prepare like any disaster. Have at least three weeks of food, three weeks of water. Uh, yeah, have some medical preparedness like for a pandemic. Just, you know, the like in the corona, just have a lot of disinfectants ready. Uh, have some have some uh, latex gloves, perhaps a CBRN suit. Just... Everything you need for a pandemic, to say. Just because, like I said, this virus is very, very infectious. So, and we know, and we, and from the movie, but I would say in any zombie case, you should uh, treat it like that, uh, like it's that infectious. Because, like we said, um, yeah, it could be infected by birds that flying around that have eaten from corpses or, or leaf feces that are infected into water sources. Uh, yeah, or even even when when you, when it's really on on hardcore mode, I would say uh, even flies and mosquitoes could transmit a virus on perhaps by sitting just sitting on your foot or just stinging you a little bit with infected uh, uh, needles, so stingers or something. So that's uh, that's very when you play very hardcore on this level, I would say. All right, uh, so you got you got home because you got home. Uh, even through all the chaos perhaps that uh, would exist uh, I would suggest now to just prepare like a bug in uh, just be a grey man and bug in that together so uh, lock, all, lock all the doors uh, lock all the windows uh, just put the rolls put the rolls down or the some, or set glasses against the windows so these few adrenaline fueled zombies when they know you're inside don't can cannot smash just directly through the window, which they often do in the movie. Since now I think about it, but anywho, just secure the whole area. Uh, uh, have you have your food? Uh, food you have your water, uh, bottled water. But uh, yeah, 
I would suggest to uh, to try to disinfect uh, water with, and that's another point. I would say, uh, not try, especially in the zombie apocalypse. I would say try not to uh, purify water with a uh, life straw because this only uh, filters out bacteria and not zombie, uh, not a virus like the most zombies movies have. So that's a uh, that's a little tip I would say. Uh, I would opt for this. Uh, these are chlorine. Uh, chlorine tablets. Uh, these will kill viruses. If you have copper, co uh, pot, uh, copper pots, put water in it and let uh, the copper kill all the pathogens. Uh, yeah, that's a better a better way to get water together. All right. So you have your food, your water, a way to purify more water so you can hold out even longer. Uh, have a bagout pack ready. Uh, just a normal bagout. I would opt for something small because yeah, this. These zombies are fast, so just a normal big on back, very as small as possible because a bigger one, yeah, you don't <laughs> even if they would walk, they could catch up with you with a big back like that. So keep it all to the minimum with just an, uh, normal things like food, uh, especially always have some water ready. Uh, I will tell you uh, because when you go out, when you have to run off and you're surrounded in a building. Uh, at least you have some always some water red in water in a water bottle ready or something to purify water with, because like I said, these are just these zombies are just human, so they will dehydrate before you must dehydrate them before you before you do. So that's the way you play that little game. So you have your bagout back ready now. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the most things. Uh, I would also also suggest to make some escape routes, just when you have a car. Leave the key on the ignition, just because when there when zombies start to break in, you don't have to search for your keys. It's already in the dashboard, and you can drive away just like that, in a hurry. So, uh, if you have a garden, uh, put some uh, places where you can run away easily, like when you have uh, fences or something, or a wall. Just put a, a small ladder against it, or just build some uh, something. Stack up some boxes, so in case you have to run off, you can just uh, directly climb over the wall. Where probably uh, when while the, most zombies are are perhaps lured in to the entrance where they breach through. So that's uh, another tip I would do in a zombie apocalypse. Uh, what's the next thing I would do? Uh, yeah, we have everything. Uh, just for the rest in the bug out, have a be a gray man. Uh, find have a way to. Uh, not make uh, draw attention to you, uh, not but nor by humans nor by zombies. Uh, let's first uh, what? How can you draw attention? Well, first of all, be silent. Don't make noises. Uh, talk very softly. Uh, yeah, keep the noise to the minimum. That's yeah, that's easy. Uh, next, uh, I would say a uh, sight. Uh, block all, like I said, block all the windows, even if you can't block it with curtains. So. Even the small, smallest light or a silhouette cannot be seen from outside, from the street or or something that uh, perhaps some zombie can see. Because in 28 days later, that's the way they discovered uh, where the military are hiding. So because of all the little lights, uh, and that will draw whole crowds of zombies to, to that place. So I would say uh, block all the sights. Uh, that also counts for when you're making a fire, like smoke. Uh, when a zombie, perhaps these zombies are are dumb, but they can still detect certain signs to where a human activity would be. If you have a when a zombie see, sees a rope column, a smoke column from uh, making a little fire for cooking, yeah, that could draw their attention. So I would say either make a very small fire or, or just cook with a camping gas light, a uh, gas heater or something, just to cook, or uh, do it in the night where the zombies cannot see the smoke. And make sure they don't see the light from the fire. Uh, next thing, smell. Uh, when you cook, try to keep it as a, at a minimum, or with some of those. Uh, how do you say this? Chemical or uh, gas lighters, uh, cookers, uh, because even the smell could perhaps uh, draw in zombies. So that's just, uh, or even hungry survivors, I guess. So that's another way to look out in a zombie apocalypse. Uh, where are we now? Oh, uh, defense. Yeah. This is probably the the most oh 
No wait. Uh, before defense, you need to protect yourself. Uh, because otherwise the defense will have no purpose. Uh, yeah. Just when you fight zombies, uh, take precautions. Pre precautions. Just, just like in Rukurena, have a mask and have uh, something to protect, protect your eyes. Yeah. Um, just something simple like this. Uh, why? Uh, yeah. When you face a zombie, uh, it's very important you don't get infected. So these are the protections I would advise in every zombie situation, no matter where you are. Uh, just this. Uh, even what I wear now. Uh, I would also, also I would always say uh, carry a woolen sweater underneath because if you have to fly, you don't get hypothermia uh, on the way. So you because your trusty woolen blankets cannot go with the uh, with the small bug out bag or something. So that's something to watch out for. Of course, you close everything up. Everything must be covered when you face a zombie. Uh, yeah, first of all, the blood splatters when you face one uh, cannot get into your eye, like in that guy in the movie. It will not get into your mouth. Uh, make sure that uh, the glasses don't uh, start to fog. So have some soap ready to put it on the outside because you want to see. Um, always wear gloves. Uh, that is something I hate in zombie movies where the people don't wear gloves. They punch a zombie and they never get infected. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, because you use your hands for everything, for work, for fighting zombies, uh, to gather food. And even the smallest wound can get you infected. So always wear thick gloves. Uh, I would say uh, perhaps worker gloves or bed or leather gloves. Uh, because even when when you try to fight them off, you have some at least some protection to to make sure that the the how do you say this the infectious uh, uh, fluids. Don't reach your skin, and even when they bite you, it, they cannot penetrate through the layer of uh, the leather. So that's another, another thing to think about. The next thing, uh, just a jacket. Yeah, you just close everything off. So when they try to bite you, uh, first of all, like I said, wear a woolen a sweater beyond as a layer of protection. But the real protection comes from uh, a coat like this, perhaps. But it must have some giveaway. Like you can see, it's not enough for really grabbing grabbing something. But when a zombie, it's I would treat it like a dog that is attacking. You must give a dog something to reach, and when they when they bite, they won't release because they think they bite you. So when uh, one of these twenty eight days later zombies bite, they bite and they bite in your coat, perhaps, but they do not bite your skin. And while you're uh, while they are biting what they think is skin, you can finish them off or defend or shove them away to run away or defend yourself. So that's the thing. Uh, yeah, I would not suggest a gas mask because it's kind of overkill. It will narrow your vision and it will make your breathing louder. Uh, yeah, that's a choice you have to make. But I would prefer these glasses because you can just in case when you when you detect danger, you can just put it down and. You can uh, protect yourself in just time you need, in, in a quick time. I would also suggest the balaclava because you can protect your whole face, keep your warm when you have to bug out or run. Uh, because yeah, your trusty woolen blanket is not with you. And yeah, you can still put this over your a balaclava mask. So yeah, protection against infection is one of the most important priorities when you're facing these zombies. So yeah, uh, protection, very, very important and almost never seen in movies because uh, I will talk about flaws and things I hate about uh, tropes in zombie movies, but we will focus on first on the survival part. Uh, next thing I would say is, uh, yeah, have, uh, also, oh, for your bug also have one of these emergency radios to know what is the situation, what is the government doing, are there safe zones? Or, or is there new information about the virus? Do they have a vaccine or something? Just one of these can save, uh, give you a lot of information. I can reach, uh, how do you say this? Uh, radio stations till in Spain from Belgium. So yeah, this thing is very great. It has a light, it, it has a dynamo, it can recharge batteries, 
has some solar panels and perhaps it can give you a little bit hope during a zombie apocalypse so this uh, especially in a zombie apocalypse would be very handy uh, next thing for the night uh, i would suggest to like i said like uh, i said have the radio with a crank perhaps there are some lights that you can uh, uh, use with a crank to ch charge it or something uh, you can charge uh, with batteries uh, perhaps because light it will not be there because yeah the people who run the electric uh, power plants uh, they will not get to work the next day so electricity will be cut off in the first few days uh, yeah supermarkets there will nobody nobody will be there to fill up the planks because there's there are now zo zombies shopping for uh, human flesh or bodies i guess and water supply mm, no way because yeah the people won't get to their work and the water might be infected with uh, with a new uh, pathogen so very very careful about that all right now we get to the self defense uh, how would you uh, how would you uh, deal with these zombies well most people's answer especially when these when these bastards are infected like in 28 days later oh and another thing they when they are close to a victim they tend to vomit blood so even when you're when you when you are holding them up they can still uh, give you a, a good old uh, uh, puke treatment. So that's a way to get infected. So you don't want to get close to a zombie. Uh, yeah. What would you use? Guns, of course. Yeah, guns. Yeah, perhaps uh, you can go to a gun store. Oh, no, wait. There are a few problems with that. First of all, you don't live in America. Most people don't live in America, so... Even when you live in America, uh, even when you find that one guy who has hundred, hundreds of guns and tons of ammo or a gun store, I bet in any zombie apocalypse, those uh, guns will be sold or stolen within all of them within two days. And in Belgium, mm, guns, uh, we we do not have, uh, we have strict gun regulations, so uh, perhaps you can find a police officer that is, has been downed or uh, one of the few gun stores. Or just a collector or something or a hunter or a sport shooter but most of those most of the calibers you will find is 0.22 and uh, some bird shot those are can do something at uh, close range but they will are they are not man stoppers to say so these 20 days late days later zombies like i said they are adrenaline fueled so even when they get shot they will still try to go after you uh yeah so i would i would suggest when you have a gun when you have a gun, I would say um, use it as a last resort. Uh, why? Because, first of all, guns make noises. And yes, silencers are forbidden in Belgium. And even when you have a silencer, it's still like 19 decibel and it will be heard from a very uh, far distance, even when you have a silencer. So when you have a gun, uh, I would say uh, it's usually uh, a hunting rifle. With a, or a shotgun with two barrels that you will find in Belgium with birdshot or sporting rifles with 22 caliber or yeah this could be considered a sports gun in Belgium as it, when it's 22 uh, yeah how would you stop these things uh, I would say try to avoid guns like I said first of all noise second they are adrenaline fueled so you have to be a good marksman to hit some vital organ to take them down in one shot because like i said they're really fast and you have no much not much time to aim carefully for perhaps uh, a, the spine or or something that will kill them instantly and that's not usually not the case these are these are humans so and humans are hard to take down actually they are like you see in america with the police officers when somebody with a knife running at them you always know uh, you will always see that they are uh, shooting mul multiple rounds why is that because People, uh, they are, they are only. How do you say this? A person can take a lot of uh, damage to say before they finally die out of because what is being shot at, it's either wise being incapac incas in incapacitated in a way that the, you hit a piece of bone, a nerve, or uh, something uh, vital, a vital organ that will down you in very quickly. Or you have you've been shot and you will bleed out, but yeah, when a bleeding out zombie can still go after you. So 
I would suggest when you have a gun and you have to use it, uh, aim for the legs because that's a you have to incapacitate the zombies. They will crawl and you can run away from them before others show up because you shot and the dinner bell, like they call it, would be ringed. And if you have to choose a weapon, I would suggest something small that you can put on your body uh, and handle very better because you can you have, you can put it away and yeah, it's more mobile. Um, and choose a revolver, I would say. Yeah, it has not that much uh, capacity as a pistol, which is just a clip that you... But most sporting, uh, in Belgium especially, most uh, people who own a gun don't have that much spare magazines. So I would suggest a revolver. Uh, yeah. And the next thing uh, is for uh, maintenance, because a revolver, uh, a, pistol, a pistol will uh, have some flaws. You can have a stovepipe, uh, perhaps, uh, you, uh, yeah, there are a lot of problems that could occur while shooting, uh, like the feather, like the spring are not working that well, the da damage of the pin or some other problems, uh, perhaps the ammo is not powerful enough to make the cycling. So, uh, there can a lot of things going go wrong with the pistol, but with a revolver, I, I almost never heard of, uh, problems with the revolver on the shooting range. So that's uh, that's um, a reason why I would choose this for maintenance and uh, and just uh, handling. All right, next weapon I would choose for a zombie uh, apocalypse. Uh, the best thing I would say is is a, actually a pole arm. Uh, this is uh, just a, a small pole arm that you can use in the garden, but why would you say a pole arm? One, because you have distance against the uh, against the zombie. So even so even it works uh, better in group and when you have something like a pitchfork which is a little bit more wider so I would suggest to put a, a little stake through it so the zombie that will get pen penetrated will not get further and will try to grab you or, or get in range for puking assault. Um, yeah, I would suggest that. When you're in a group, one can hold a zombie back and the other can finish him off with another weapon. And yeah, it can be... Yeah, I would suggest this, actually. You can pierce them, throw them on the ground and get the hell out of the way. And it's actually easy to handle. You can stab, you can throw them away, you can kick them. Just like pool fighting, uh, quarter step fighting, if you, uh, one would do. So, I would just just a pole arm that can do such things. And the next thing is, uh, I would say, when you have to go out uh, with your bug out bag, this. Yeah, a simple hammer. I know, perhaps a baton, a big axe would be more uh, handy, will be more deadly. But I'm going for multifunctional, because this, when a zombie gets close, that you have to use something like this, and you don't have your pole arm or gun, uh, this would be better. Because it's multifunctional in different ways. First of all, it's a weapon you can bash a skull in. And that's the also what I mean. Uh, bashing a skull in with a blunt thing will less penetrate the skin or something. And less chance for really blood spatters. Uh, when you crush, uh, crush a skull but leave most of the skin intact with the axe, it's always through the skin and it will splatter uh, infectious fluids all over you. So this is a good uh, last resort weapon for close quarter defense. Like I said, when a zombie bites you in your arm, you can hit them with this. Second uh, is uh, on the claw hammer is to something to pry open doors or lockers to get supplies or to get into a building. So you can open the door, open doors, uh, perhaps some lockers or something. It's it's acting like a crowbar. Uh, next thing is a. Uh, Opening windows when you have an escape route, when you need an escape route or to uh, get into a building, you can knock the window, clear the sides because you don't want to get the cuts that might get infected. So also handy. And the last part I could think of is uh, when you need to get higher up, uh, fire escape ladder or a wall. You can, if it's a little bit too high, you can use this hook and pull yourself up perhaps. Uh, so. Yeah, I would choose a claw hammer because it's multifunctional and you need uh, you you need to spare on weight. All right. 
Then this are the oh one last thing. Uh, a night vision uh, goggle. Uh, if you have a way to power this up with a dynamo or a solar or a power bank, uh, I would this would be very handy in a zombie uh, situation because, like I said, these are just normal uh, normal people, so they don't have heightened sense or touch. They just think uh, they go in the direction where they think they can affect someone. So in the night, it would be very useful to have one of one of these uh, night vision goggles, just to look around. And just, uh, yeah, use a balaclava so the light is not visible around your eyes uh, from the screen. So, yeah, uh, night vision goggles can give you an edge in nightly uh, excursion because they cannot see you, they cannot find you by smell and hearing. It's a game of guessing for them. So, uh, it can um, higher up your chances for survival. So, these are just my things I would do in a possible zombie situation uh, just a little fun and a thinking exercise to apply the things that I already own how I would I use this because like because in a zombie situation you have no time to go to the store because everyone will plunder it already up all right so now we are done with this uh, yeah movie tropes all right the to my uh, to my uh, idea the biggest uh, flaws in zombie movies like I said before, protection. You, I. It's always astonished me that, like in The Walking Dead, nobody has has protection. They smash, uh, which which just knives. A uh, zombie skull open. They get splattered all over the face, uh, over their hands, uh, over their whole body, and they never get infected, except when it's especially a, a certain drama scene when somebody has an open wound. Or get bitten because oh yeah, the splinter in your mouth and your eyes and all your wounds. Nope, that will not affect you. But just a bite, hang, and you're you're a goner perhaps. So that always bothered me in zombie movies. That's the I'm mainly <laughs> uh, pet peeve, I would say. <laughs> all right, uh, what's the next thing uh, in zombie movies? Oh, uh, like I said, if uh, when you go out, a bug out bag or and at least something some water bottle or canteen around your belt or body or something you these guys in the zombie movies they never have water bottles they only have perhaps a sword on their back and a, and a holster and nothing more yeah perhaps a knife but they don't have food they don't have water or something to make water it's 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 absurd in my opinion Ugh. had to flush that one out all right uh but it's another pet peeve. Uh, the use of chainsaws. <laughs> oh boy. I always have to laugh with this one. Uh, chainsaws are one of the worst weapons you can use in a zombie apocalypse. I mean... One. Uh, noise. It will draw every zombie around. It's a loud thing. Second. Have you ever touched cloth, uh, a piece of cloth uh, or cotton with... Uh, while you were uh, using a chainsaw, you know what happens? The cloths get uh, uh, dragged, dragged with the uh, with the two. How do you say this? With the teeth from the saw, get in the motor, and it will start to crop up, and it will the it will make the motor stop. So the moment you cut a zombie, you get through you get through the flesh, you get through the you get to the clothes, and the cloth will stop your chainsaw. So now you don't have a weapon anymore. Uh, the next part, like I said, I should have started with this one, the splatter. Because you are starting to cut and all the, all, everything, all the uh, tissue, blood, brain juice will splatter in your face. And not just splatter, it will be sprayed in your, in your face. So, infection. So now you are infected. Now you don't have a weapon anymore because you got stuck by cause of the cloth. And you do have... Uh, a horde of zombies around you because they heard you. And the last thing of chainsaws, uh, yeah, fuel. Because, yeah, fuel is. You don't have water, but you do have fuel, I guess. <laughs> Priorities. Uh, next thing. Oh, this is something that I always hate. Uh, there are two types of uh, of uh, gun gunmen in uh, zom in zombie movies. 
The first one is uh, the you know those guys who aim from the hip. Oh, zombies! You can only kill them with a shot through the head or to in a vital organ, and they shoot from the hip automatically and waste all their bullets, and then they have no more ammo. Oh no! Yeah, fuck those guys. Uh, yeah, don't shoot from the hip. Don't shoot. Uh, be conservative. Conservative with uh, ammo, and shoot semi-automatic at least. And aim, for God's sakes, aim. And now we come to the second uh, type of person, the marksmen. You can hit any. We can hit any zombie brain in the area. Uh, I never. If if I would, if I would stand on a shooting range, forty five meters away, and you have to hit my brain with uh, just a pistol, uh, even in the best conditions, it will be very hard to hit my brain. Not because my brain is small, but because it's. It's very difficult, even on a shooting range, even in a relaxed areas, in relaxed area, with a good with a good relaxed stance and a perfect uh, time enough to aim, and with a good maintained weapon that is cleaned. Uh, yeah, it's very hard to hit a target uh, of this of this size. So imagine in a when there are running zombies all around, you're stressed, you're probably hungry, you're tired. And these guys are just, while they're running, headshot, 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 headshot. No, no, no. I, I, <laughs> I don't like those, those uh, scenes because it's not realistic. Uh, like I said, aim for the legs, you have more chance to hit something than the brain. And you can finish conserve ammo that way. So, <laughs> that's another movie trope I, I really, that really pisses me off. All right. Uh, what is another movie trope? Oh, uh, this is something that I also hate. Uh, you know when there is always a plot where there, there the survivors, the few survivors, or they ask help from another group, and the group says, "No, we don't have room for other people. Get out." Well, two mistakes in those with those uh, scenarios. Uh, one, um, there are safety in numbers. Uh, the more people that are available to defend against zombies and yeah the second uh, yeah there are actually three parts the second part is when you turn somebody away who is desperate guess what they will come back and steal your things and will even kill for it because they're desperate so at least when somebody asks for help give them a little emergency package just enough that it won't hurt you but just enough that they will go away and and die on their own somewhere else while trying to get to whatever wherever they want to go so just that's something to think about about uh, people's psychology uh, when uh, when somebody asks for help in a stressful situation not only in zombies but in real life too I'm gonna make a video about this yeah whatever that will come later uh, third uh, perhaps that person that ask you that's ask your help or something that person has probably good some good skills. I always say, like in The Walking Dead, they people that are asking for help, they leave those uh, people behind without even talking to them. Uh, what if that guy that that tries to ask for help is a doctor, somebody with medical skills, per perhaps a farmer? You can farm after the zombie apocalypse. Perhaps he's an engineer. You can he can build you a solar generator or something. Yeah, there are so many skills that pe we people are very specialized in skills. So every person that has a, uh, a specific skill can be useful in a survival group. That's something to really think about, actually, if you think about it. Yeah. Uh, what is another thing? Ah, oh, fuel. fuel. I hate it in the zombie movies when they say, oh, it's been years since the apocalypse. But guess what? The oil refineries are not working. And all the gas will be already been used, will already been siphoned out of all the cars, or will be uh, overdate because guess what? Gasoline it gets a uh, it has a date uh, when it goes bad. That's usually two two years normally in good conditions. So yeah, cars that will be a real problem to operate. Any engine actually will be problem problematic to operate. So. Think about that uh, in The Walking Dead, even years after the uh, that guy with the crossbow can still ride his motorcycle, where, where does he get this fuel? 
I mean, come on. Uh, oh boy. Uh, all right. What is a uh, another movie trope uh, about zombies? Uh, I think this these are it. Yeah, I will I will keep it to these. I probably will remember later some, but fuck it. These are the things that bother me the most. Uh, yeah, this was just a little video to to just shits and giggles. Have some fun. It can survival doesn't always have to be so serious. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sub subscribe, leave a remark, a reaction or something, all that good stuff. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Cheers.